Vivek Ramaswamy just bought a large stake in BuzzFeed, but now what will become of the once media behemoth? Yahoo, man! He gonna turn BuzzFeed into base feed or India feed. I don't care. Whatever he's gonna change it into, gonna be better than what it is right now. We gotta talk about it because uh, the headlines are coming in. Vivek Ramaswamy demands major shift at BuzzFeed after buying stake. Ex-presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy buys big into BuzzFeed calls for a shakeup, and he's even beefing with the former CEO and founder, Jonah Peretti. All right, so we're going to talk about, we got the comment section. We will give you our thoughts, you know, having been in the digital media space for some time now, but uh, yeah, please hit that like button, check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys, and we also have the super thanks button available now, so if you like this video, hit that super thanks, and then, you know, your comment will pop up, and we'll talk to you. Smala sauce at smalasauce.com. This is his quote, Andrew. Now the social internet model is dying or dead and BuzzFeed is caught without a viable strategy. Nearly every le legacy media company has failed its audience. The first one to openly admit it and make major changes could soar. So basically, Andrew, he was kind of being negative about BuzzFeed's past even though he just bought like almost 9% of the company. Right, now 9%, David, to put that in perspective, is that a lot? All right. So from what I believe, the company used to be worth $290 million. It's now worth $50 million. So they've lost like $250 million of valuation. Let's just say Vivek brought in $20 million. So that's, it's a lot for a single guy. It's enough that his voice will be heard, but it's not a big enough stake that he can like just go in there and do whatever he wants. You're saying he does not run the company. This is not like when Elon bought X. No, because Elon bought a majority stake of it, meaning that he effectively could dictate every move. Right. If you buy the majority, you can pretty much make things happen, whatever you want. Uh, this guy fired back Jonah Peretti. Based on your letter, you have some fundamental misunderstandings about the driver of our business, the values of our audience, and the mission of our company. I'm very skeptical. It makes business sense to turn BuzzFeed into a creator platform for inflammatory political pundits, and we're definitely not going to issue an apology for our Pulitzer Prize-winning journalism. Ooh, fiery words. Well, he's basically asking, yo, does Vivek Ram Swami want to turn BuzzFeed into the Daily Wire? Yeah, which I could totally see them not doing that. And if Vivek thought that that's what was going to happen, he's absolutely wrong. But I have my own thoughts on what could happen to BuzzFeed. But David, let's go into the general five different viewpoints about this. Point number one, Andrew, Vivek is claiming that having a conservative voice is a new oppressed minority within mainstream media outlets. Right, and I think a lot of people feel this way and I don't know if it's really true because now the pendulum has swung where basically if you have a conservative voice and you're on the internet, you feel like, wow, man, YouTube or these other platforms are the you're only about places. Rumble, kick, et cetera, et cetera, right? Yeah, that these are the only places that we can have conservative voices because the media is tuning us out. And then, but at the same time, they're also kind of like, Everybody has to buy into each other's thing, you know? Like, if one conservative voice says something that the other conservative voices don't really agree with, then they become ostracized too. So now both sides, both left and right, are policing each side equally. Right. I think there's a lot of internal factions and, like, balkanization. Like, uh, between Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro, there's, a, like, a lot of beef on yeah. the right. Or, like, even if you're a Republican or on the right side on the right wing side but if you talk trash about trump you're kind of ostracized by like all of the other people you know what i mean where it's like so who really wants open discussion the left people say the left doesn't want it but it doesn't seem like the right wants it either but it is interesting that it, the right is typically against dei and affirmative action until conservative voices get placed in the oppressed protected class then they do like some affirmative action in DEI. Right. But it just depends on who you're putting in the who gets DEI group. Right. Stop talking about being oppressed until the conservative voices get oppressed. Now we're oppressed. Uh, point number two, Andrew, both sides, left and right, up, down, whatever you want to spectrumize it or see the gradient color wheel, uh, both sides try and buy and puppeteer the media through ownership or equity stakes. Mm. Agree or disagree? Mm. Both sides do it. Yeah. Because people are saying that, obviously, Elon, uh, I guess he used to be middle left, switched middle right. He's got Twitter, changes it into X. Obviously, I'm more on the right, right. I guess you've got True Social. Now Vivek is trying to bring BuzzFeed from, would you say BuzzFeed was on the far left and he's trying to bring him towards the middle? Or is he trying to bring him to the right? I think the right answer would be to try to bring it 
to the middle if he could instead of switching it all the way to the right because that's not going to happen. Right, because then you're saying you're co- you just another one that's being compromised on either right. side. Right, so basically both sides, the right and the left, are spending a lot of money in order to control media on their own side. You know what the truth is, man, and I don't see either side addressing this issue right now, is that America is a very diverse country and everybody more than ever before has different Overton windows. I'm going to pop up some photos of what Overton windows are. These are basically like... Everybody says everybody has freedom of speech in America, but only within an Overton window, within like a a spectrum of like acceptability. You know what I mean? Like it's like a range. And I'm just thinking that right now, until we address the fact that different people with upbringings, different belief systems, religions, race, religion, creed, whatever, have different Overton windows, we are not going to get anywhere as a country. That's the real truth. And neither side, neither mainstream media outlet is, they're more playing into people's Overton windows to make money and get an audience and get watch times and engagement, but they're not actually trying to understand each other's differences at a baseline. Mm. Point number three, Andrew, some people are saying Vivek is literally just the biggest pandering person who wants to become a celebrity for being smart and he'll, he's willing to say whatever to achieve that. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, do you agree with this or not? Uh, the only reason why I kind of agree with it is because I've been looking at Vivek Ramaswamy's new YouTube channel, and he just is acting like just any other YouTuber. Like, he's trying to, like, get attention for... I don't know if he's trying to keep people engaged so that he can become VP or because he like wants to run Like a president later on down President the line. again, but I don't know. It's like he's not necessarily making the most compelling content. I would have, like made different content if I was him. He's kind of, kind of, in my opinion, play himself out this way. But you guys let me know what you think. Let me just run this clip from him at the Libertarian Conference. I believe the future of this country depends on a Libertarian Nationalist Alliance that will save this country. That's what I believe is required. I mean, there he is, Andrew, at the Libertarian Conference going, hey, I think libertarians are the most important group in America. But he might go to another conference and be like, I think farmers are the most important. I think white collars the most important. Blue collars the most important. But well, maybe- David, that just means they're all important. Uh, point number four, Andrew. A lot of people are saying, how come everybody who gets rich doing something else just thinks they can be ultra good at everything nowadays? That's funny. Yeah, I mean, it seems like that. Well, right? I would just say, I mean seeing is that you don't need any political experience to win president yeah that would make a lot of people believe that they could do it it's a particularly american belief that if you have the ability to acquire capital you are just the ish at everything Mm. like you're the you're 10 out of 10 at everything i don't know man is there something to it or should we question that point number five andrew why isn't anybody blaming buzzfeed for messing it up, messing themselves up, and putting themselves in this situation. Um, they, they expanded huge. They bought up Huffington Post. They bought up Complex. And then they had to sell them off at a discount. Basically, it's like me trying to grow, gobbling up properties. I devalue them internally because I'm just like not well run. And then I got to spit them out and sell them for like salvage value. Right. Right. And I'm saying that this is just simply capitalism, right? This is what allows somebody who comes in who's ideologically different from your founding fathers to come in and like buy up a huge stake of the company. Mm -hmm. I mean, this literally is just capital. And I don't know why anybody like people conflate like capitalism, morality, politics, all in the media when media is just a business at the end of the day. It's literally like shareholders and stocks and, and equations and algorithms. Ultimately, man, what do you think, Andrew? This is big news. I just think that at the end of the day, until we have a media outlet that actually explains the differences between how people develop their Overton windows, nobody's ever going to agree because basically the liberal uh, media is going to come in, the conservative media is going to come in, and they're both going to put their like value system or Overton window as the like with a moral imperative or like think it's like morally superior Mm -hmm. without actually trying to understand why different people have different value systems. Yeah, I mean, going off of that, I kind of agree. I need. I think there needs to be like a control media. Not controlled media, but a control media, meaning like a media that's more balanced and kind of defines things. So it's like the media company will be like, hey, by the way, guys, this is what liberalism kind of means in 2024 when people say this word. This is what it's supposed to mean or this is what it right. does mean. You're saying this is what it meant in the 1960s Yeah, where some people are still thinking the 1960s version and then they're like, this is what the 2024 yeah. We need version. like an interpreter 
balanced, like, like almost a politi. Do you trust Politifact or Politico.com? That's generally considered unbiased. Politico. Or yeah, they try. Yeah, I, I they know try what to you fact mean. check. So I'm saying, or like, they try to place things on a heat map. Yeah, right? they need to like Politico needs or something like that needs to be a media company. Something that like, it's not that it's just saying everything's in the middle, but it's trying to like interpret what each other is saying, you know, on the left and the right. So I think that's going to be really important. No, I don't know if BuzzFeed becomes that. I think it should. To be honest, I think that'd be very helpful for the world, well, but I don't know if it makes money. I agree with you because I think it's actually starting to get really confusing even if you're on a squad, red or blue. It's starting to be like hyper-factionated. Yeah, guys. There's a lot of people out there saying a lot of things, trying to define things for other people, and nobody's on the same page, and therefore you can't have a discussion unless you sit in the same room. Maybe that's what this new BuzzFeed company does is bring people together and sit them in the same room like pundits, you know? No, It's no. like a... Oh, it's, it's, it's like a neutral ground. But you know what would be better than Jubilee? Because at, at the end of Jubilee Project videos, you know how they got everybody arguing? They don't necessarily agree on an Overton window. They just, like, talk about their differences. Right, right, right. But until America actually centers it somewhere, then everybody's just going to be emotionally trying to control everybody else. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think of this in the comments section below. Vivek's buying BuzzFeed. Yes, no, good, bad. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.